Hey guys, welcome to the Playbook UX channel, your source for all things product and UX. In this video, I am going to focus on screener questions. I will get into specifics around what a screener question is, when you should use one, and why they are important to building better products. Asking a bad screener can cause you to qualify bad participants who will skew the outcome of your research study. Let's jump into it. You may have heard about screener questions in reference to finding the right audience for your user research study. But actually, what is a screener question? A screener question is a way to weed out participants who are not qualified for your study. You should screen participants when you are looking to conduct research. Here are some categories of screener questions that you can ask. Demographics. Examples of this category are age, gender, and household income. Firmographics, such as job role, company size, and industry. The frequency of use, such as how often you use the software. Tech savviness which is asking someone how good they are at using technology. Device types, such as computers, tablets, and phones. Decision maker status, which is asking someone if they are the primary decision maker in their company or household. There are a few tips we have learned over the years of running user research studies. First, keep it short. Don't ever write a screener with more than five questions. Participants will be disengaged and quit in the middle of it. Especially when recruiting niche demographics, we want to make sure users aren't fatigued with the screener. You may accidentally screen out a great candidate if you're asking too many difficult questions. Also, if a participant is disqualified after a long screener, they'll be frustrated. Next, start broad. Your first question should be broad, with the following questions becoming increasingly more specific. Asking someone if they like the Knicks, and then asking them if they like basketball, is not the right sequence. Instead, you should ask them, do you like basketball? And then ask, do you like the Knicks? Our next tip is to stay away from binary yes or no questions. Instead, use multiple choice questions. With binary questions, participants have a 50% shot of qualifying, which decreases the credibility of the study. For example, instead of asking, do you work in market research? You can ask, do you work in any of the following fields? Next. Do not ask any leading questions. Instead, answers chosen from a list are more reliable. Instead of asking, on a scale of 1 to 5, how much do you love the Knicks, you should say, on a scale of 1 to 5, how do you feel about the Knicks? When you are looking to test with a specific target demographic or firmographic, ask the qualifying questions in the beginning of the survey. If your budget allows, use a robust recruiting software where you can filter down by demographics first. Next, use simple language, not jargon. We don't want to confuse or trick participants. Often, companies use acronyms as if they're commonplace. Try avoiding any words above a ninth grade reading level to avoid confusion. When you send questions to a group, you don't have an opportunity to clarify, so writing clear and concise questions are important. Next, you should be very specific when defining frequencies. Asking questions with answer choices such as often, rarely, or sometimes, is confusing. This is incredibly subjective. I may think often is once a week, but you may think often is every day. Instead of asking how frequently do you use Slack, with answer choices often, rarely, and sometimes, try asking how frequently do you use Slack, with answer choices daily, weekly, monthly, and never. The next tip is to utilize other, I don't know, or none of the above, as answer choices when the list isn't all-encompassing. This will yield better results since participants won't select inaccurate answers to proceed to the next question. Another tip is to make sure you provide clear, distinct answers that don't overlap in order to prevent confusion. In this example, if you're 40 years old or 60 years old, you don't have a clear answer choice. Should you select the first answer or the second one? Next, you want to make sure you limit the number of open-ended questions you ask. It causes the participant to be fatigued, and for the researcher, it makes reviewing the screeners difficult. This is especially true if you're using a UX software that automates the qualify and disqualify process based on the participant's answers. If you ask multiple open-ended questions, you will have a lot of participant responses to review prior to even starting your research. Lastly, this may be a good opportunity to add a non-disclosure agreement, or NDA, to your screener questions. Often, 
If you're working on projects that are confidential or haven't been released to the public yet, you want to include an NDA form to ensure the participant doesn't reveal any exciting new features before you're able to make the launch announcement. Let's walk through an example. Pretend you are looking to speak to HR managers who use video conferencing software on a weekly basis. These questions depend on the software that you're utilizing for recruiting. If you have a software that allows you to filter by demographic and firmographics, you won't need to ask some of these questions in the screeners. For this example, assume you are not using the comprehensive software that I just mentioned. The first question you might ask is, please select your job role. Assuming they select Human Resources Manager, next, you may want to ask, have you used any of the following software? If they select a video conferencing software, you should send them to the next question. The next question you may want to ask is, how often do you use video conferencing? Screeners are just one of the many steps in selecting great participants. Make sure to subscribe for more insights on product and UX.